as promised, our first guest on the form this morning is Stephen Marsh. Stephen, a very warm welcome into the show. Great to have you with us. And it's going to be a pretty big weekend for you with all these runners we've got to get through this morning. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Good to be uh, good to be back on the show. It's uh, it's been a while, so must mean we've got a nice team in again, eh? Yeah, exactly right. Let's go through uh, Pukakoe first because a couple of really nice progressive horses to look out for, and we'll go through them in race book order, starting with race number two. Run to Perfection is uh, a horse we get to see step out. Fresh up, thoughts on the trial? Yeah, didn't mind the trial. He's only out there for just for a little gallop round. Um, you know, he's a, he's a classy sprinter. Didn't have a lot go his way. Sort of last campaign, but he's going very well. Um, he's drawn nicely. Joe Cameroon take one kilo off his back, and yeah, he'll uh, he'll go a pretty forward cheeky race, um, and any rain wouldn't worry him. And you leave the blinkers off in a fresh condition. You, you sort of got that up your sleeve, I guess. Is that the thinking? Yeah, absolutely. Look, he, he doesn't need the blinkers on. Sort of his first first couple of runs, and then sort of maybe third or fourth up. Fourth up, we'll uh, we'll slap them back on. But yeah, fresh up each city doesn't need them. And what about a goal this prep? This is obviously just a starting point after a freshen. Is there sort of a, a bigger goal in mind later on? Look, not a not a huge amount. He does like really wet tracks, um, so he should be one of those just sprinters that you know he'll get the fourteen hundred. We'll just play around with him and try and um, sort of earn as much money as we can, run them in. A nice sort of, uh, you know, Saturday races. And then obviously you've got Mega Bourbon in that uh, same race. It had a brief freshen as well, consistent prior to that run and, and nice in the King's Plate. Yeah, he's been going really well. Uh, we just gave him a little freshen up. Um, probably the, a few firm tracks sort of started getting the better of him. But no, he's been going terrific. Uh, been running in good fields. He's drawn out a little bit, but does have the service of Michael McNabb. And uh, he's going to sprint really well on a fresh date. And then finally, we want to get to Iconic Star as well in that uh, second at uh, Pukekohe. Posted some good placings in top company during the summer. He must have been pretty happy with the trial win. Yeah, she uh, she needed that trial too. She's drawn one. She's got Craig Grills in the saddle. She'll jump. She'll put herself mm -hmm. straight up on speed. Um, and, you know, she, I, I sort of maybe may have thought with the draws and everything, she might be, and her racing pattern, she might be the one to beat. She should, uh, she should jump and lead. That was my next question, which is uh, your favourite of the three, but Iconic Star goes in on top. Race number three, Wind Speed, is the horse that we move on to next. Just the three starts, but you obviously thought enough of this horse to, to run it in the Uncle Remus. Really like it. The 1,200, the 65 is just a, a kicking off point for her. You know, um, she probably just started to feel the effects of, uh, you know, firmer tracks last time in as well. Um, bit of a funny time of year, not a lot to really... Um, Sort of uh, target her at. She's going to be better as a as a four year old anyway. I did like the way she trialed. Um, you know, she's got to take on the older horse, but she'll sprint well fresh. She'll be stepped with the fourteen hundred, but you know, probably not get too ambitious, ambitious until next preparation with her. And then race number four, Financier in the Champagne Stakes, one the first of our features there at uh, Pukekohe. Step up to listed company. Must have been satisfied with that fourth on debut when really was pretty unlucky, wasn't it? Yeah, I just would have loved to have seen him sort of get out and get his real chance. I think he's, um, I think he's a really nice colt. This rate him highly. Uh, Draw one. The mile should suit. Um, you know, he'll be, he will have some pretty ambitious uh, sort of targets next preparation. But um, yeah, I think he'll go a lot better than what his uh, price tag would suggest, and, and he might be one to follow through those sort of guineas races as a three-year-old. Have you noticed progress at home since that uh, debut run? Yeah, look, he's always been a, a very easy to deal with colt. Um, and look, he hasn't, uh, he didn't have a hard run. He sort of only got going that last little bit, um, but hasn't knocked him at all. You know, he went up there for an overnight trip. He was perfect. And yeah, just a, a terrific temperamented colt. And, you know, hence the reason we've been able to back him up pretty quick to a second up run. And then also in that same race, you've got uh, Shadow Boxer, of course. Similar form line, really, to Financier with the one start for a fifth. Tell us a little bit about this horse. Yeah, he's just been green and just so new to it all. I didn't mind his first up run. Penny still hasn't dropped. I've taken the side blinkers off, put the uh, blinkers on. Um, I expect him. He'll be hitting the line. Um, but, you know, he's sort of going, probably just starting to go through a bit of a drone stage. She'll have this run. He'll have a nice spell. And, you know, he's potentially going to be one of those horses. Uh, a Christmas 2,000-metre horse, he'll be starting to really come into his own. But, you know, his last bit of his race uh, was certainly his best the other day. And then race number five, uh, Chicana, is uh, the horse we want to focus on next. Had a nice break, and this looks like a good starting point. Yeah, very much so. She's a quality mare. She's drawn out a little bit. Um, Taiki Anagheta in the saddle, he gets on very well with her. She'll get back a bit from the draw, but just expected to be hitting the line really good. And, 
you know, you're going to see her in some nice races. And look, potentially she could uh, head to Brisbane um, into June uh, for a couple of those little cups races later on in the carnival. But yeah, very, uh, very nice mare and, and does appreciate a little bit of dig out of the track. And did that trial bring her along as you'd hoped? Was that sort of a, a nice stepping stone towards this fresh up run? Yeah, absolutely. The trial was really nice. She sort of just ran out of room. She was just starting to really pick herself up and just ran out of the room on the line. Uh, but Michael was wrapped with the way she felt. And um, yeah, I think she's coming up great and she has definitely come on from the trial. And then obviously in that same race, El Vencedor is uh, the next one in form. Last start winner at rating 65. And that was by yeah, an enormous margin, Stephen. You must have been pretty wrapped with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's he's been great this preparation. Um, everything about the prep's been good. His win was super. Um, I wasn't as excited when the barrier draws came out and we pulled barrier 19. Um, but he has got that good early speed. He'll go forward, hopefully get into about the first sort of four or five. He might be outside the leader in the 1-1. One, one. Uh, he's he's going to have to work a little bit. Um, but he's another one. He's potentially earmarked to go to Brisbane. So if he can put his hand up here, he'll be on the next plane. And then finally, packing joy in that uh, same race. Another who's back from a break. Are you happy with his trial? Yeah, really happy with his trial. That his trial's terrific. His work's been great. He probably he's drawn out a little bit, but he'll come in a couple. Um, I think he's a real each way chance, um, and will be probably at pretty decent odds. So if you watch the trial, the the last bit and through the line was really good. And uh, obviously, he's got quite a, a good record in a fresh state, hasn't he? Which is encouraging too. Yeah, he, he didn't get a lot of luck last campaign either. You know, he wasn't beaten far in like a Dunstan final. Um, he went some really good races and, yeah, I think he's coming up really well. And then also want to mention one out of the box who's obviously uh, in the emergencies. What can we expect if this horse gets in? Yeah, she's drawn horrendous as well. Uh, 1,400 short of her best. She's, she'll get back a bit from that draw, hitting the line. and you know, She'll be better suited when she gets up to a mile plus. And then if we move along to the championship stakes, which features Hoard the Bourbon, who's been a horse that's been attracting a nice bit of media attention recently. And it seems like he's really just come into his own this prep. Yeah, absolutely. Look, last preparation even, he was unlucky in the Hawks Bay Guineas. Um, arguably, he could have finished a lot closer and even won. Um, he just had a slight little issue, very minor, but we decided to err on the side of caution and give him a good spell. Um, forget about the 2000 guineas. Um, he's come back so good this time in. He's he's won his uh, you know he's won his couple of races at 1400, then up to a mile. He does have to step straight to the 2100. Um, but just the way he's sort of going, the way he's working, he's, he's he should love the 2100. And you know he's certainly um, I think he's right on track. I mean we don't expect he has to win, but um, he'll go very well, and uh, he's on track for the for the Derby. Yeah, what's the path that you'd take to the derby off the back of the championship stakes? Yeah, he'll uh, he'll fly out, all going to plan, he'll fly out the following Friday. Uh, he'll uh, race two weeks later in the Rough Abbott Plate and then two weeks into the derby. That's all going to plan, but um, yeah, certainly looks an achievable task for him. And you mentioned he doesn't have to win, but uh, you're sort of hoping you'd like to see a, a top three finish or something similar to, to warrant sending him over there? Yeah, just knowing he's going to have an improvement in him, um, he'd still be expected to race very big. Um, yeah, certainly top three or a, an extremely good run. Um, you know, as long as he's sort of a sticky enough gate barrier 10, as long as he gets the right run, um, yeah, but he, he's got to be right there, but uh, we do think he's a very good cop. And then if we get along to race seven, which is the Easter Handicap Proposal, Repeater is uh, your charge in this one. What did you make of that uh, recent run in the Flying Stakes? Yeah, I like that run. Um, He's sort of he's been going good, um, you know. Sectionals and all that have been good, so probably his runs have been a little bit better than what they've looked. The miles probably the the um, the, the miles the query and the, the draw of twenty is uh, awful. He could potentially be kept. Um, he might go to Tirapa in a couple of weeks' time um, on the thirtieth for an open fourteen hundred. Just makes it hard, but we'll just see on scratchings. We won't sort of we won't panic. But um, yeah, I was very disappointed to see that marble. I must say. Yeah, I bet. And uh, the other one, obviously, you've got in that race who's an emergency at this stage is Osaka. What are you hoping for there? Yeah, just hope he gets a run. Um, he's drawn a lot better in barrier six. He'll probably come on a couple with the with the emergencies. Um, he hasn't sort of done too much right-handed in his life. He's always been a little bit awkward. Um, his first troll this time in uh, was right-handed, and he is very good in his, in his fresh up run at Rotorua. You know, the smaller track like that on a firmer conditions, um, I thought his run was good, his sectionals are really good. Um, the step up to the mile, 
53 kilos. Um, if he does make it in, he'll be uh, better than a runner's chance. And then, Stephen, before we move along to Rickon, and just wanted to get your thoughts on a best for uh, Pukekohe there on Saturday. What, what, what are you thinking is your best chance? I could have potentially had Al Vincidor if he drew a gate. Um, but I think, yeah, I, I, we'll still go hoard the bourbon. I think, you know, if, if the rain really came, it might put me off a bit, but it's sort of, that looks to be clearing. So let's go hoard the bourbon. And then if we cast our attention to Rickerton, you've got a, a couple of nice horses down there and some of the feature races too. We'll start in race four. Pao Tong is your charge in this one. Son of Safferville, two starts and a couple of gear changes of note. Yeah, we've just uh, just a new horse to the stable. Um, he's a nice horse. He's just been doing a fair bit wrong in his races. Uh, look, he's probably going to be a hell of a lot better horse. Um, we're, we're just going to try and ride him off the speed a bit. Hopefully he can settle and hit the line, but... He's probably going to be better after a spell and um, starting from scratch. He's probably just a little mentally immature, to be honest. And then race number five, Monza Secuto, freshened after the White Robe Lodge, making the progress that you'd hoped since then? Yeah, Troll was good leading into this. Um, and, you know, she'll just need this run a bit. Uh, she'll still race very well, um, but then she'll be stepped up to the, the Easter Cup in a couple of weeks' time over the 1400. But, yeah, she's coming up really good and the Troll is lovely. And then race number eight, Divine Saba, that's in the listed war step, of course, and take on Reputable, uh, a third at a latest outing. But up to the 2,000 metres, that sort of changes things a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, just um, we've had her down there um, now for the one run, and, and she obviously got black type over the mile. Just seems a different horse down there. She's relaxed, she's happy. She's always used to, to race very fierce in her races, but, God, she relaxed beautiful the other day and was really good to the line. Um, she's drawn beautifully. If she can just go to sleep, which I think she will on the back of her last start, um, you know, she's by Savabil. She'll get the 2,000. And I've sort of let her just roll out in the market a little bit. Um, but, yeah, we, we think she's a real chance in the 2,000 metres. So I think she's going to get it better than a lot of the others in there. Mm. And then finally, race number nine, Summer Festival, and one of the other features on that uh, car. You come through a last start second over the 2,000, and I guess you meet a similar sort of race. Yeah, it's um, look. It, it obviously, would it'd be better off if it was handicapped conditions. He'd be uh, he'd get him with a beautiful weight. Weight for age makes it a bit harder, but you know he's drawn good. Courtney Barnes gets on very well with him. Um, he's going to jump. He'll roll along, sort of up in that first two or three. And um, yeah, the way he's going, he's got a new lease of life down there, and he's going terrific. And you know it is a good field, and there's some really nice older older horses in there. But um, he'll race well. And Stephen, before we let you go, just your best uh, in your opinion at Rickerton for the weekend. I think just with the draw and up to the 2,000, I think Divine Sav is going to go a really big race. Stephen, thanks so much for your time. been great to get your insight into all of your runners across those two meetings, and best of luck there on Saturday. Thanks, Emily. Appreciate it. Keeping with our New Zealand focus here on the form, we now link in with Matthew Pittman, who uh, joins us on the line. Matt, great to have you with us and looking forward to talking through all of your runners there on Saturday at Rickerton. Yeah, we're, we've got our team primed ready for another big day on our back doorstep, you know, and the um, team seems to be racing well lately, so um, hopefully we can get a couple of prizes again. Before we get into uh, some of the horses, tell us about uh, what we can expect from a track conditions perspective and what's the weather been like? Uh, we've had a really good week weather-wise. I think the track um, should have a little bit of give in it, but but should suit all horses. Um, we had a slight drizzle this morning, but nothing major, and um, it'll probably be on the firmer side. But I mean, that suits our team. It's, you know, we got to look after number one. But um, yeah, it should be good. Yeah, sounds like it'll give everybody its chance. Let's start with your runners in race number one, Star Ballot, on debut. What can you tell us? Yeah, Charles' form's been really good, um, as you can see was back early in his trial but ran home nicely he's a staying tight but uh 1400 fresh up should should suit nicely and i think the big roomy track at rickerton is another asset as well so yeah we're expecting a cheeky run and obviously has had a number of trials has there been improvement in sort of uh, putting it all together throughout those trials yeah that's right he's um you know he, he's he switched on slightly more from each trial you know and um, he's one that will improve with time, but we, as I said, I think that he's, his trial showed enough that he can go cheeky first up. And then race number two, we wanted to talk about uh, Tommy Turbo. Recent run was uh, its best. What, what do you put that down to? 
Yeah, he's knocking on the door now. He's another one. He's a staying tight, but he keeps going from strength to strength and um, just had a little bit more luck last time. And um, Yeah, he, he's knocking on the door and I think he can go close. Any sort of reason behind the decision to go back to the 1,400 metres? Does that make any difference? Uh, no, we just gave him a little bit of a freshen up after his last run. Um, that way we can press on with him and have a... Yeah, you know, he can have a have a decent decent campaign ahead of him and um I mean he's one that we think can go through the grades um quite well later on, but he needs to get that experience under his belt and um yeah, that's what we'll be focusing on at the moment. And then also in that same race too, you've got a busy lad who a three year old that's on debut. Again, enlighten us on this one. What can you tell us? Yeah, he's trialled up nicely as well, um, leading into this. Um He's another one. He's probably a bit of a staying type and will improve with it. Um, but again, he's, he's shown us enough that he can go cheeky first up and um, should be an each way chance. The draw doesn't exactly help, does it? Uh, drawn out a little bit there as Busy Lad? Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, um, exactly. A first starter on this big roomy track when you're out in the open, they, they can um, look around a bit and be a bit green. Um, mm. Uh, he has taken a wee while to come to. He's starting to turn to a little bit of a professional now, but I think that, yeah, I would have preferred him to draw sort of six or seven or something like that. And then race number three, Savvy Boy, is the horse we move on to. A winner two starts ago. Do you think he can get back to that again on Saturday? Yeah, he's another one that's had no luck in draws. And he, again, I think he's drawn 20 um, this, this Saturday. And, uh, you know, he had no luck last start either. So I think that. If he can get in and get a bit of luck, then yeah, he's he's working well when he can get a get a get some of the prize. But um, again, he's going to need that luck and it's a competitive day here at Rickerton, and um, luck goes a long way. Also, in that same race, you've got Tavi Light, who's obviously uh, on the ballot. But uh, pre pre the interview, you were telling me that uh, if he can get in, you will definitely be running. Yeah, he will. He, he went nice enough here two weeks ago. He. Um, was back and Tanya Jonka was on board and never really seen in daylight till about the last 150 and I know he's only finished 10th but he's hit the line quite strongly on that occasion and um, step out to 1400 um, is key to him and um, hopefully he does get a run because yeah we think that he's working really good and he's another one of ours that will be a good each way chance if he gets in. And then race number four is what we move on to next. Uh, Tavanasia is the horse, a two-year-old on debut. You must be pretty happy with those uh, recent trials. Yeah, got two in the race with yeah, Tavanasia and Garden City and both of similar types, I guess. They, they've been trialling up well. They, they are um, quite professional and got a bit of talent there. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're pretty happy with them going into the race and... Um, obviously, with any two-year-olds, they sort of improve from run to run. But if they can both go nice races, we'll be happy. Is there any way you could separate them as the one that's sort of taking preference at this early stage? Uh, I think that Garden City is probably a little bit more professional. Um, there's not a lot between them talent-wise. Um, they do a lot of their work together and the, a lot of their work sort of in line with each other. But um, I just think that yeah, Garden City is probably the more forward horse. And then up next, we get to race five, which is OK Pal. You get a nice soft draw here, and you come through some pretty good form races. Yeah, he's an, an enigma. Everyone knows that. He either wins or he goes near enough to last if things don't go his way on the day. Um, his win at Wellington was top top notch, and he's a horse that we can't think can get towards it, something like a telegraph um, in the future. It's just, yeah, as I said, he's got a pretty good win strike rate in the terrible place strike right so um, hopefully if he gets a bit of luck and things go his way on Saturday and he can show the real OK pal that we all know knows there. Yeah it's uh, all hit or all miss isn't it. Sam Wynn knows him well though and that's always an asset isn't it? Yeah I mean that's why we've gone with Sam. She she rides a lot of his work. She's, she's won on him a couple of times and um, yeah gets on really well with the horse so yeah it's an asset getting Sam back on. And then in race number eight, Reputabel in the listed war step. Really keen to get your thoughts on, on how Reputabel is. The record speaks for itself. God, she's been so good in what she's been able to do in recent runs. Yeah, I mean, arguably, I guess, along with um, Kenny Ray's mare, she's been the horse of the Autumn Carnival. And, um, yeah, we, we hope that she can put an exclamation mark on that this weekend. She, she keeps going from strength to strength. Um, She's a real race horse that does everything right. Tina gets on really well with her. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to the race with a little bit of confidence. She's won four on, four on end and um, been doing so reasonably comfortably. And Tina said the other day that it 
that she won com uh, more comfortable than it had looked. So, yeah, it, we take a bit of confidence there. I bet you do. And uh, deep into the preparation, have you? Um, how did she come through that latest run? Yeah, she comes through it really well. She's a real professional. She eats up um, everything after a race. And um, as I said, it's a big asset when they just do everything right. And that's her. She floats well. She she eats up well. She's nice nice in the race. She doesn't overwork herself, you know. So, um, I mean, the step up to 2000, I guess it's got to be a little bit of a query, but she's... Um, she's by pins and everything suggests that she should get the distance, no worries. And I think if she does, then obviously she's the horse to beat. Yeah, most definitely is. Uh, race number 10 we get to is Seti Smith. Got motoring late, which uh, makes that 1,600 metres look ideal. Yeah, he's, he's a horse you almost need to ride a ugly. He's, he's got the talent of an open-class galloper, but he's, just, he's taken a long time to switch on. And when he's amongst the field, he looks at the other horses and he doesn't go forward. And I think when McNabb and when Carvish won on him, he was three wide in the breeze the whole race and, and stuck on to run past him, you know. And unfortunately, he's drawn near the inside and um, Sam's going to have to do a bit of work to get out at some stage. And, but if, if she can, then, yeah, he's, he's a big chance again. And finally, before we let you go, Da Vinci Girl also in that uh, same race. Yes, her race run last time was a lot better. I think you put a line through the Stokes race. We had a crack and ended up having to go forward from the draw and that just wasn't her go. But she was hitting the line really strongly last time. And Tegan asked if she could ride her again. Now that she'd ridden her once, she thought she could go close on her if she got, got another crack with her and um, we've chosen to stick with. And um, hopefully, yeah, she gets a bit of luck and she'll be hitting the line strongly later. And before we let you go, Matt, if we just uh, have a look at uh, all of your runners across Saturday's record and meeting, if you could single one out for us that you feel is your best, who would it be? Oh, I mean, it's hard to go past Rafita Bell. Obviously, you need a bit of luck in stakes races, but she she creates a bit of her own luck because she's such an easy ride and um, such a real race also. Yeah, I mean, hard to go past her as our best of the day, but we've got nice chances all day again. It certainly looks that way. Well, best of luck with Reputa Bell in the uh, War Step Stakes, and uh, fingers crossed she can add to that uh, win record. Yeah, thanks, mate. Thank you. One of New Zealand's best jockeys has elected to take a break across the Tasman in New South Wales and take advantage of a couple of nice horses that have headed over there. I welcome into the show Sam Weatherly. Sam, great to have you with us and no doubt you're enjoying that Australian sunshine on the back. Yeah, for sure. Actually, um, they said I, I must have brought the good weather over with me because um, since I've been there, it's it's been nothing but sunshine. So. Um, not really good to be over here in a little bit of a, um, a working holiday as such. Let's uh, have a little chat about Maria Farina, who, of course, uh, you've got um, over there and who'll be racing this weekend in that Grain Shaker Vodka handicap over the 1,200 metres. How has she settled in? Yeah, very well. She's actually um, she's actually thrived since she's been here and, and um, looks a million dollars. And, and to be fair, I worked here on Tuesday morning and... I believe it's probably her best bit of work she's done for a, for a very long time. So um, she's obviously really, really enjoying it over here at the moment. She brings some really nice recent form, doesn't she? We're looking at one of those replays here. Talk me through those uh, recent races. Yeah, um, she can actually really gallop this horse. She's Look, she's um, the race you're watching now. She come up to them on the bridle and she's a bit of a, um, a difficult horse to ride, as you say, because... As soon as she sees clear air, she thinks the job's done. So uh, I think her form line, there should be a lot more um, ones in there rather than, than threes. You know, like every time she sort of run third, she, you could probably make a case that, that she should have uh, nearly won. So um, I think, I definitely believe she's better than what her, what her form suggests. And she's just <laughs> um, a little bit of a madam sometimes. She doesn't like the winning post. So uh, we just have to ride her a... Um, a bit of a difficult sort of way for me and um, hopefully time our run and get there at the last minute. 
Yeah, that does make it uh, tricky for you, doesn't it? Uh, that last run was on the 5th of March, so it has had a little bit of uh, space between runs. Do you feel she's really uh, screwed down and ready for the fresh up uh, assignment in Sydney? Yeah, for sure. She doesn't take a lot and she seems to uh, perform well when she's when she's fresh and she likes to sort of bounce around on her toes. But she's had a couple of really good gallops uh, here on the on the course proper and then the um, the inside grass and and she's going well. As I said, she doesn't take it take a lot, so she looks a million dollars and I think she's working as good as she ever has. So um, really looking forward to getting out there on Saturday and seeing how she matches up. I saw on the Racing New South Wales website that so you've elected to take the blinkers off. Is that just because it is a fresh run? Um, just trying to change it up a bit. As I said, like before, she she doesn't like the winning post. So um, just sort of trying to um, change a few things and see if we can we can get her to really hit the line and um, and want to win. So. These mirrors can be a little bit funny sometimes when they when they get into a bit of a habit like that. But um, yeah, as I say, just trying to change things up to see if we can we can get her back winning. And uh, Sam, we can't have you on without talking about Mulliston, who of course raced last week. And geez, I thought he was sort of going to finish uh, midfield to back, but really motored late. He must have ended up being quite happy with that run. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was a huge run, really. It was um, he hadn't had a run for for a wee while and. The pattern of the day, we we sort of just got got back on the inside there, and and the wheels started turning at the 800 when it was we were racing quite tight, and he got got put into the running rail for a couple of strides, and and then he came out and he, as as you see on the video there, he was just sort of um, sort of fanning on the ground, but then he he really worked home when he when he gathered himself up and he was very strong to the line and and through the line, he's the last horse to pull up, so. Um, I was absolutely wrapped with the way he finished off. His sectionals were great, and a, a lot of a lot of the form people around here that um, sort of know their stuff, they're all sort of saying, "Gee, it's a, a great run," and especially heading towards what we want to go to, and uh, like the Hawkesbury Gold Cup or the Coast, which is a week later. So he's heading in the right direction, anyway. And how did he come through that run? Because it is tough for them, isn't it, in the heavy conditions over there? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it did. Um, it did knock him around a little bit, he, but um, to be fair, he's had a couple of quiet days since, so um, he looks well, he's eating everything, drinking everything, feels good, so um, yep, not looking forward to getting him to Hawkesbury next Saturday, where I think he'll be very competitive up, up to a mile, and especially there, it's a big long straight, and um, the field we sort of uh, run against last Saturday is the is probably the field we're going to meet again so um, I'm off his last run I'm definitely not um, scared of them now anyway the way he hit the line. Yeah I bet uh, certainly uh, warrants being there that's absolutely for sure. What about for you being uh, back in Australia has it been, in, been nice to head back? Yeah for sure it's good I, look it's been three years since I've been back and um, just really good to come and see a lot of my mates that I've that I made over here, and um, obviously it's almost like a bit of a working holiday. So I've got uh, Bri and myself, we're here doing the horses, so we do it in the mornings and the afternoons, and um, I don't know if I could pick up a couple of extra rides. That'd be that'd be nice, but but I'm actually just really enjoying myself at the moment. My body's body's feeling good, and my mind's in a good place. So um, no, really really enjoying it. Well, that's great to hear. Well, Sam, thanks so much for your time this morning. Best of luck with Maria Farina. Hopefully you can produce that uh, ride to get her to score and uh, with Mulliston, of course, in a, in a week or so. Cool. Thank you so much, Emily. Now time to switch codes on the form and focus in on Alexandra Park on Friday night where of course we have a really good card of racing including Group 1 action and to talk us through those feature races is Craig Thompson. Craig, a very warm welcome to you. Yeah, good morning Em, welcome in. Uh, it's uh, looking forward to what it's going to be a fantastic night on Friday night. Yeah, we're back to Group 1 action at Alexandra Park and under the, the new orange setting we can finally have a crowd there Emily which is 
going to be great, obviously top of the park and uh, all the facilities there haven't been used for the last three months and uh, we're going to have a decent sized crowd on course highlighted obviously by the Group 1 Taylor Mile but we've got a fantastic trot race as well over a mile. The best pacer in the country, the best trotter in the country, all at Alexandra Park in the space of one hour. Yeah, talk to me about that uh, race number eight, as you alluded to, the Group 1, the Dawson Harford Limited Taylor Mile Mobile Pace, where, of course, as you mentioned, uh, self-assured back at the track. Yeah, I mean, the race was fantastic last Thursday night, uh, Emily, over 2,200 metres, held so much interest with the Aussies being here, and two of them have stayed on to race in the Taylor Mile this week, and then to the Messenger next, next week, I'm referring to Mac Dan and Majestic Cruiser, and they've got the visitors draws nine and ten, and self-assured's got the same draw as he had in the race last Thursday night at Barry and number eight. Incredibly fast front line here, Emily. Looking at this field, going through it, there is so much gate speed. Hot and treacherous. AG's White Sox. Krug. Spankham, the Miracle Mile winner, who runs third in this race on screen as we self, uh, see self-assured beat Majestic Cruiser last Thursday night. Uh, it's all about face of fly. Cranbourne's been a leader in its last three. And then we haven't even talked about South Coast Arden, who led this race after about 600 metres last Thursday night. This is one of the fastest front rows. This is why I'm not convinced uh, self-assured is just a $2 favourite. He's the same quad as he was last Thursday. The different this week is shorter race not so many chances that he can work into the race and I reckon he settles at the back half of the field after about 400 metres so um, can he win the race absolutely is the best horse in the country he is but this race is a real tricky race Mark Purden's not driving he's suspended Tony Hurley who's a uh, uh, the country's well, one of the country's best drivers takes the drive um, I just think there's probably a little bit more meat on the bone with a couple of other runners and I refer to the horses that run second in the third in the race last Thursday night. I think Spankham's $5.50 was well overs. I thought he's a chance to go forward from a handy draw. And I love the way Majestic Cruiser got home in that race. To the second row is not a bad draw for him. Of course, we've got two previous winners of this race in the form of Spankham. The other one is AG's White Sox. And that's whose Majestic Cruiser follows through from the second row. So a lot to divulge, a lot to talk about. We'll do a speed map for you on Friday night, previewing into the race uh, the, mess, uh, the Taylor Mile uh, Emily, I think it's going to be an intriguing contest. Self-assured, your 210 favourite. And what about race number nine, Craig? Because that also delivers, doesn't it? And, and in this one, Sunday's Sun is the horse we get to see. Very similar to what my thoughts on um, self-assured. I think he's uh, $1.65 is short enough for him. The reason I say that, he's actually at eight miles, this horse, and he's, he's, he's never won at a mile, which is quite incredible when you think about his, his uh, form and how dominant he has been in Group 1 races. But a mile has been a little bit of his nemesis. Muscle Mountain's form over short distances is really good. Now, I thought the 350 they put up on uh, Wednesday afternoon was real overs for him. When he gets in front of Sunday Sun, he's very hard to run down. We've seen that in the past. And there's a very good chance on Friday night from his barrier number five, he'll roll forward. He did that last time. He's got great gate speed. Uh, the only other one, and probably the enigma in the race that will go forward, is Temporale. He's back from Australia. Before he went to Australia, he led from Barry 8 at Cambridge over 1,700 and the race was taken out for Bolt for Brilliance. He's an absolute gate flyer. So this race here sets it up again, possibly for the favourite uh, to be beaten. And I do think the Muscle Mountain's a horse that can win. Really keen on him, Emily. The, the $3 is gone now. He's starting to shorten. And I think he'll shorten even more in the next 12 hours. He's my clear top pick to win the mile. Well, Craig, thanks so much for your time. Great insight, and it sounds like it's going to be a ripper of an evening. Thanks, Emily.